Hey guys, welcome back to the MJ Guna Podcast right here for the MJ Guna Talk. Of course, there are a lot of stuff to talk about in this episode or video, podcast, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, I was thinking about trying to wrap everything up or trying to do a big, big review for the past few days. Of course, in the uh, tomorrow's video, uh, United game will be out in, I mean, will be played in nine hours pretty much. So, so uh, the next, of course, post-match review will be out hopefully in 12 hours. Within 12 hours, I can probably get it done. But I have to separate these two podcasts because, again, I don't want to overwhelm myself. Certainly, I don't want to make myself feel tired, you know, when I talk about everything all at once. Uh, if you guys have been you know with the channel or for the podcast for a while i used to do like 45 minute podcast which i thought it was a little bit too long for me and you know at one point i just kind of gone gone crazy at one point just keep on talking no water you know nobody that i interact with just kind of me sitting here talking about ours by myself and honestly i can't really do that in the long term so i cut down the video podcast into 25 minutes around 25 minutes mark so it makes me feel better in, in a lot of ways so we have a lot to talk about in today's game uh not today's game in today's episode uh for transfer deadline which was passed uh 24 plus hours ago uh, Tramp, uh, Champions League draw, cow about round three draw, and also the recent update of uh, you know certain players. So let's get into it. And of course, by the way, uh, I will be away from Canada. I will be going back to Hong Kong for two and a half weeks. So I haven't gone back for four years. So it's going to be nice. Uh, I'm going to miss my girlfriend for sure. Uh, I know she's going to listen to the podcast at one point. So here you go, baby. Um, I miss you. So uh, the th- thing is i want to talk about is uh well there's a lot right i mean uh yes so i'll be away which means that the i won't i won't be bringing my mic there so uh the the mic quality the audio quality might not be the best and you guys might probably hear some ambient sound of you know my family doing stuff in the in the living room i'll be pretty much in my you know bedroom in hong kong or you know in my flat and talk about our snow, but I'm sure I might be making two podcasts, probably one of them, uh, something to do with the international break, any updates regarding to recent news, and also there's a game against Everton away from home on the 16th of September. So let's get into it. Right, so let's talk about the transfer review. Of course, the transfer window shut, and a lot of clubs make a lot of businesses over, what, you know, the last span of, 30 to 48 hours and of course arsenal was arsenal were busy selling players not buying players so uh uh i mean to be honest i kind of knew that we were not going to sign anybody i it, it felt that way in in i mean it felt that way in the very longest time uh and I, I wasn't even surprised that we didn't bring in anybody because I think after the Raya signing, we were actually looking to sell players, upsell our players. But in the end, I don't think we sell them quite successfully as you know as we all thought it would be. And of, and of course, we thought we we're gonna bring in maybe one more player, whether it's a you know a, a short term player, a loan player to kind of fulfill or kind of replace timber in the defensive area or we might sign a attacker but unfortunately uh the last few days of the transfer window we didn't quite link up with anybody uh and uh of course i heard something about child Chow- Cancelo. uh turns out it was false and right now arsenal pretty much stuck with what seven defenders eight defenders but I'll talk about that later. Let's talk about the transfer in general. I would give it a, ooh, I'll give it a six, not not six. I mean, that's way too low. 7.5 out of 10. Keep it like that. I mean, the majority of the points that, you know, was rated was pretty much we got ourselves into the business quite early on. I like that pretty much a very similar situation with last year. With Jesus Vieira, Sinchenko signed with Arsenal very early on the season. That's why we prepared very well. Uh, conversely, we didn't quite, we didn't do quite well so far. I mean, even though we won two and we drew one game, but I felt like those three games we could have probably win quite easily and more convincingly. But we didn't 
quite do that, especially the game against Fulham, which I thought it was a very disappointing result. And, uh, and yeah, uh, so 7.5, I think we have a very strong start, uh, kind of quiet in the middle. And, of course, the whole David Raya link came on. And certainly, of course, the deal was amazing, 3 million loan uh, fee and also 27 million option or obligation to buy, which is, again, a very fair play to Brentford. They know we might have a FFP issue. So that's why they loan right to us three three million. It's a win-win situation for both sides. Um, uh, I think Brentford retained the player in a way, retained the player and also retained the value of the player, just in case if they sold or if they are thinking about selling Raya, they still have the assets in Arsenal. Again, if if Raya didn't turn out to be good, um, they can back out and we can look for some alternative. Who knows? Yeah, and in the end, uh, the ride deal came on, got him for a loan deal, and also uh, in the end, we sold quite a lot of players, which I'll go into that very uh, later on. But in the end, we just couldn't really get a replacement after Timber's uh, injury, so that part just kind of felt a bit disappointing in the end. But overall, very strong window for Arsenal for sure. I mean, adding more qualities in different areas, especially in terms of the defensive area, we added more quality. But Timber's injury didn't quite help that a lot. So the first, uh, the first player that we're gonna rate based on the ratings, pretty much uh, based on the transfer, was pretty much Kai Havertz. Again, play three games. I don't think he has done anything amazing. I don't think he's done anything bad. Maybe in the last game against Fulham, he did. Bad compare. I mean, he did bad more than doing good uh, to the team. It was very disappointing. Uh, just gotta say that. Um, I mean, I would give the signing seven out of ten. Again, we all know how he was with Chelsea, and at the same time, we all knew how good he was when he was with Bayern Leverkusen. I realized he he played like 118 caps before turning 21 or 20, 20 or 21 before signing for Chelsea. And of course, uh, playing for Chelsea for three years, scoring that winning goal against Champions League. Of course, he had a tremendous experience in the first team already. But the fact that how he was treated or how he played with Chelsea was another another different story. Um, it, was, it was quite disappointing, I got to say it. Uh, I mean, we signed him for $65 million. A little bit too much, uh, if if I have to be fair, um, but uh, but it is what it is. If Arteta sees a player in him, if Arteta sees you know habits could potentially integrate into the Arsenal team smoothly or helping Arsenal to win games, you know what I trust Arteta. Give it like that. Second signing we made was Timber, I believe. So forty-five million signing from Ajax. He was an Arsenal boy, supported Arsenal. Uh, from my knowledge, he was probably the brightest signing uh, alongside with Declan Rice. Again, being able to play on the right side, center back, and also left back as well. Uh, can play exactly how Ateta wanted him to play, inverted right or left back, very good on the ball, technical, good technical player, and of course winning his duels, especially the game against Nottingham Forest and also Man City where I believe both games he played tremendously. And I believe he is, or he was the man of the match against City and we won the Champions, uh, not Champions League, I wish we won the Community Shield. But Timber signing was pretty much a 10 out of 10 for me. Or 9 out of 10. Maybe the injury kind of messed things up in the transfer window. Or, or, or messed the way how we want to play anyway. Which I'll go over that later. And yeah, and that's pretty much what happened. Timber could have been an amazing signing. Or he was an amazing signing up until that ACL injury. Hopefully he's going to be back stronger and better. Next player, Declan Rice, of course, the most anticipated signing, transfer of the window. Arsenal have been eyeing on Declan Rice for the past, what, for the past year? Past, past eight months, uh, eight years. Uh, 100, 100 million plus 5 million add-on. It's, uh, I thought we're not going to get Declan Rice, and I thought it might be a little bit overpriced. I don't, I, of course, I certainly don't think Declan Rice is worth 100 million, but he's English. With that English tax uh, selling to another fellow London club. You know 
you know it's going to happen. I mean, you know the price is going to inflate a little bit higher, and that's exactly what happened. Honestly, I thought he could, you know, he probably were 80, 75, 80 million, but you know what? If we, if Arteta thinks that he's the key of the puzzle, he's the key of making Arsenal progressing to another next level defensively and offensively, then you know what? Arteta got his player. This is Arteta signing. And so far, of course, Declan Rice, 10 out of 10. Of course, he hasn't had a assist or goal yet, but past four games he played for Arsenal has been very, very positive. Uh, the game against Crystal Palace, again, defensive massive class from him. He was everywhere. Same as Fulham, I think he was the brightest player compared to pretty much compared to everybody else. He's, you know, he looks like a proper player. And I just can't wait to see what he can offer more. He's only 24 year old, a captain material, you know, a starting player for Gareth Southgate and the England squad. So, I mean, we, we're getting, we're pretty much getting a proper player. Uh, Nick signing is pretty much what Raya said the same thing. A very good player. Is it a backup player? I don't know. Is it a potential number one player or number one goalkeeper? I don't know. But he's there to provide competition. Uh, you know, provide competition for Ramsdale. Again, Ramsdale got a little bit too comfortable at one point. So adding another top class international, the Spanish in international goalkeeper certainly is going to help Arsenal solve the goalkeeping you know, area for the next year or two, but I know it's not going to sustain very well in the future uh, unless you know either Ramsdale or uh, Raya are okay to be number two goalkeeper, but I doubt, I doubt it because both of them were amazing goalkeeper. You know, good player, uh, a good goalkeeper, that's why that, that signing is certainly a 8 out of 10. Might not be necessary, but certainly... Uh, to the point where Arteta thinks that there there is a competition to push Ramsdale or Ryan to the next level. So be it. So be my guest. I am all for competition. I'm all for putting the best play on the pitch. And uh, of course, uh, that's pretty much all the players that we signed. Let's talk about the departure. First play that was that departed was I believe it was Popolo Marie. It was more of a you know clause was made or obligation. Uh, well, yeah, probably one of the uh, clauses uh, were met. That's why there's an obligation to buy seven million, I believe so, seven seven million euros. Uh, Pablo Murray again didn't really have much of a connection with that player. Didn't quite play too much for us, but one of the you know one of the signings for he's one of the signings for Arteta back in 2019 2020 season, I believe. So had his bright moments while I thought he was pretty calm on the ball, but again, I mean. The game against Chelsea uh, two seasons ago pretty much saw the last, the last of him. Uh, Grant Shaka again, it's a big heartbreak to a lot of players and also to a lot of fans as well. Nobody would have thought how good he turned out to be for the last two seasons. We thought, you know, after he was stripped uh, from captaincy, that was the end of him. But he came back, have a having a perfect, perfect redemption arc. Uh, and of course, being, I don't know, maybe a legend, maybe an Arsenal Emirates legend, who knows. But I mean, certainly worth it to be a legend for, for you know, based on the last two years of his, you know, of his career with Arsenal. Proper leader on and off the pitch. And, you know, playing that box-to-box -box midfielder for Arteta. It might not be for him, but he adapted relatively well. Of course, could have been better. I'm not going to complain. Uh Arsenal pretty much lost uh, an important figure in the dressing room, and he will be solely missed. Uh, who else? Oh God, I'm just kind of counting down. I I I, I really don't know who left. I think Carantani left to uh, Real Sociedad. Uh, I don't know if if it was confirmed from the last podcast, but. He's gone on loan for a year. Again, a good club for him. I mean, it's a it's a it's a proper Spanish culture playing a, a pretty good football in Spain. They have Champions League football as well. So technically, KT is not missing out, but his time with Arsenal has been amazing. It's just he is so injury prone at one point where we just couldn't really rely on him, unfortunately. And also the way how Arsenal have 
grown or um, or evolved for the past year or two playing that inverted left back. And you know when, we, when you try to play him as an inverted left back, it didn't quite work out, isn't it? Um, and I'm sure probably the game against Man City where Cole Palmer scored that goal, uh, he slipped a little bit, couldn't really get you know clear the ball for the first time. I thought you know that was pretty much the moment where you know the the career for TND is pretty much coming to an end. And no matter how much I want to back him, it's just really tough to be honest. If he doesn't fit into our system, um, then it is going to be it is going to be rally. It's going to be brutal. But again, I don't agree in a way I still don't agree letting him go right now Timber is injured we have what I don't know six seven defenders right now in the Arsenal squad that's why that is why because of Timber's injury uh we're playing three at the back so tomorrow against United if we play three at the back I'm not going to be surprised because if you play the proper back for Sinchenko uh Gabriel Saliba Ben White uh you leave Tommy Yasu um, Kivior and also Rue Walters I believe he might be The reason why Arsenal didn't sign another defender Maybe Maybe that Rue Walters Is ready to go uh, Can't wait to be honest Another youngster being uh, being called up Or being uh, about to make his uh, senior debut For the club Hopefully he will And who else uh, Nuno Tavares left for 1 million loan fee plus 12 million option to buy with Nottingham Forest. A good club for him to go out on loan as well. Um, certainly, uh, well, I mean, certainly, certainly uh, they played pretty good football today. They beat Chelsea, so that's all that matters. Carrying that Arsenal tradition of beating Chelsea at the bridge. Uh, but I, it's funny because there are rumors going around where uh, Nottingham Forest offered 20 plus, 25 plus. A permanent deal fee to Arsenal, but that collapsed and turns out it was a loan deal. I'm not quite sure how accurate that source was, but you know what? At least we're getting you know getting players out. Nuno Tavares was one of them, and later on Matt Turner making that move. It was because of his departure leading to the signing of David Raya. Matt Turner, I thought he was a good good backup player, good shot stopper. But when the money comes back, it's right. I believe it was 10 million. We made three million, three million profit out of him. Uh, could have been higher to be honest. I thought he could be maybe 12 to 15 million that type of caliber of player. But you know what? We sold him for a profit. Certainly, he wanted to play a uh, 28 year old. He still, of course, he still want to you know represent the states, the United States of America, and the next World Cup. Certainly, he has to play. But I'm very happy that he got the move. Certainly, he's a good lad based on how he is. Uh, Austin Trusty, I don't know anything about that guy, but he came on a few times for Arsenal. I thought in the preseason, I thought he looks pretty good, not bad to be honest. But we all know he's not. He he didn't have a future for Arsenal. But selling him for three million, uh, five million, I believe, so to Sheffield United, making a double of a profit. Again, it's a dub for us, but could have been a little bit higher based on how good he was with uh, with uh, Birmingham. And who else have love? I mean, who else have love? I mean, <laughs> Alex Runerson. I mean, we don't talk about this guy. Going to Cardiff one year, I believe his contract coming to an end by the, by the end of this year. Arsenal have no uh, interest of uh, extending him at all, which is fine. And later on, Okwanko going to Wexham United uh, after Ben Foster retiring over the last weekend, uh, it makes sense why Quanko goes there. I mean, I thought he was going to get sold, but you know what? It's good for him to have some uh, game time. And uh, Sambi Lekong, uh, no matter how much I have defended him over the last year or so, we all know Sambi do not, does not have a future for Arsenal. He has good potential, but certainly the way how we play, Certainly, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. So, uh, I think he, he'll be going out a one-year loan for Luton. Uh, but I'm sure Luton's going to go down. But I'm sure, at the same time, Sammy's going to start every game for, for Luton Town. Hopefully, help them to stay up. But I doubt it's going to happen. 
But the purpose of that loan move was pretty much to sustain his value. Hopefully, uh, you know his, you know he's he's gonna have a good good career there, a good one year season for Luton Town, and uh, bulked up that that um, uh, that price uh, that price tag of him. Hopefully, that's gonna be the case and sell him for profit because I don't see him playing for Arsenal ever ever again, no matter how much. I like them. I try to like them. Marquinhos left to, I believe, somewhere in France. Uh, I think it was Olympiaco. Something like that. Uh, one of the uh, French clubs. Uh, again, uh, I thought he was going to provide some sort of coverage for Bukayo Saka for the first half of the season. But if Arteta thinks that Saka can you know, play every single minute on the right side this season or even the first half of the season, so be it. Uh, Marquinhos, good, good low move for him. Uh, this is going to be a big one. Rob Holding has left the Crystal Palace for one million plus three add-on. Uh, not a good value, to be honest. I mean, at this point, we just kind of petty those player and sell them for whatever it is. Certainly, it is going to be a profit, but I think I think Rob Holding has to be worth at least nine or ten million. I mean. How can other clubs put in their, you know, another English club or putting another offer to another English club for, you know, for a mediocre player for $10 million? I don't know how that worked, but Rob Holding certainly has left for uh, for that. Uh, $1 million. Of course, we made a profit in the end if certain clauses were made, but <laughs> it is what it is. I mean, Rob Holding has to play. Uh, that video, that interview he did with Timsey was was a very good, you know, was a very good interview. Uh, it shows how great of a person, uh, top, 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 top lad for for Arsenal. The whole Kivior story that he had was amazing, and certainly is a very good guy um, off the pitch. Uh, certainly one, you know, one of the main guys in the uh, dressing room, but. After what? After seven years in service for Arsenal, I mean finally come to an end i mean he doesn't quite fit arsenal uh arteta efficient but it is what it is and we could have probably sold him to newcastle a few years ago for at least 10 plus million but in the end if he needs to play he needs to go out you know go out and play so be it as long as the player's happy both sides are happy uh yeah i'm, I'm gonna miss rob holding on honestly i mean uh, i still think the best game he had with arsenal was his first season FA Cup final against Chelsea, playing with uh, Mertesaka. First game for him in a while back then, and of course Monreal playing as a left center back, playing five at the back that uh, that day. And Rob Holding was bodying Diego Costa. I remember that game very, very much. I think I watched that game. But yeah, uh, Rob Holding will be missed, and that's pretty much the uh, the transfer side of things. Uh, not too shabby, but could have done a little bit better towards the end. But it is okay. I mean, right now uh, we're gonna talk about the next topic because it's 23 minutes in. I'll try to wrap, wrap it up within seven minutes, hopefully. Champions League draw. We were in. We are in Group B. Feels like a Europa League group draw, <laughs> isn't it? Sevilla. Sevilla was in what Europa League last season. Uh, PSV. Uh. We play against them in the group stage as well, and somehow we play against them again. But the good thing is this time they don't have Xavi Simon and also um, Cody Gapo. So hopefully we're able to win both legs, to be honest. And later on we have Lens as well, uh, the French side. So a very Europa League vibe out of that group. But I'm pretty confident Arsenal can you know top that group up. Of course, uh, we're in part two. Bayern was in part one. Uh, we we know that uh, you know Bayern were written all over the group stage with Arsenal. Thank God we dodged a bullet because uh, United will be facing Bayern Munich in the Champions League for Group A. <laughs> It's uh, it's just really, really funny to be honest. Uh, I think there's one group. I think it was PSG, Newcastle, AC Milan, and uh, shoot, and Barcelona. Uh, they're all in one group. Newcastle, it's pretty much are pretty much in turmoil right now, losing to uh, Brighton three nothing, three one. 
I don't think they would get I don't think they would get out of that alive to be honest. But uh, the schedule for Champions League is out. Uh, I believe the first game will be against PSV at home on the twentieth. But unfortunately, I'll be on a flight. Um, yeah, I'll be on a flight that day, so uh, I might miss that game. I might miss the uh, you know the first Champions League game in seven years. The last time I watched a Champions League game, I was in high school, and right now I graduated from from university, so it shows time flies. But it's good to hear the Champions League in my ear once again. I'm loving that. Uh, yeah, um, I'm sure Arsenal might top that group up uh, quite comfortably. Hopefully, uh, later on, uh, round three of Cowboy Cup, it's drawn at the moment. Brentford away round three. Uh, I doubt we're going to win that game, if I'm being honest. I thought we were going to play against a lower league side. Hopefully, league one or league two or even championship as well. But we, we were drawn against um, Brentford. Hopefully, um, Raya is able to play that game, but I don't know what's the uh, what's what's the contract about. He might be able to feature in the Com Cup Cup competition despite facing against his former team. We don't know yet, but that game will be taking place on the twenty sixth, I believe. So it's a Tuesday, is it? Something like that, something along the line like that. Uh, but but yeah, <laughs> so. So that's pretty much it for the draw. Uh, Cowboy Cup, it's out. Champions League, it's out. And also Thomas Potter picked up an injury. Four-month injury, four month injury, groin injury. Some, some, you know, some tear on the groin area. I don't know what's that about. Hopefully, I don't... Hopefully, it's not going to be bad. I'm scared, to be honest. I mean, we're very thin everywhere. Defensively, in the midfield as well. And I'm sure because of Timber's injury, we are playing three at the back. This is my verdict, pretty much so. And you can play uh, Sinchenko as an inverted left back and kind of switch in the middle. I'm sure that might be how we're going to play. I honestly don't know how Arteta is going to you know, shape up the whole uh, Arsenal defense in the next few days or in the next few months. But if, it's, if it was true that Thomas Party is out for four months, then... We're pretty much done for the season. I don't think we're going to... Well, we might be able to make top four. But we're not going to win the league for sure. If Thomas Party is out. And knowing... Knowing... Because uh, apparently... The, the injury might occur in... On Thursday. Something alongside on Thursday. Then Arsenal could have probably reacted... For 24 hours. But we didn't sign anybody. So we kind of bite ourselves in the tail. I don't like that approach if Arsenal knew... Uh, that we are quite short in players. I think we should probably go on and sign a lone player or you know somebody to fill in that role because right now it looks like we're pretty thin. We clear all the uh, dead woods. I mean, we still have Nicholas Pepe and also Cedric in the team. It is going to be nice. I mean, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, window is still open. Uh, but hopefully they take two of our two of our players and uh, give them a sizable fee so we can move on from them ever again. And yeah, hopefully Thomas Partey. I, I I mean, even if he picked up an injury, hopefully it's going to be a couple of weeks, but certainly not like a tear to the point where it is going to keep them out keep them out for three four months. Fingers crossed. Certainly Arsenal fans do not want to hear that. We have a th- thin squad already already. Losing Timber, party at the start of the season. And we are, what, we're not even, you know, we're not even into the international brick yet. So, fingers crossed. Hopefully, Tom's party will be fine. Turns out it was just a rumor. Turns out it was just false. Because I still bet Arsenal to end up second place. So, thank you guys for listening. Uh, the next video will be out. The next episode will be out shortly within 12 hours. Uh, hopefully Arsenal beat United, but hmm, I don't know. Uh, currently, United might be, I don't know. I, I don't want to jinx anything, but I feel like United might win. Uh, I feel bad saying that, but that's my general feeling. So thank you guys for listening. Do all the good stuff to the channel, and I'll see you guys in a bit.